Hello, YouTube. Hello, Zoom. Hello, all of our friends at Ira. And you are about to enter the Ira Active Zone. Oh, Ryan missed his cue. Darn. <laughs> Sorry, I, I heard double for a second. It creeped me out, and oh, I couldn't no. do that. Are you still <laughs> hearing double? No, uh, no, I fixed it. Okay, I had good, to, good. Okay. I had to mute. I forgot that I could, when I start YouTube, I hear YouTube to make sure it actually <laughs> oh, works. Yes, and exactly. it, it scared me for a minute. Exactly. <laughs> well, never fear, because. So the IRA Active Zone is a place where our IRA Active coaches can give you some ideas about how to use those minutes because we hear from a lot of folks that you really want to keep your plans because maybe you have some credited minutes that you don't want to lose and things like that but you've got a lot of minutes left over and so let's come up with some creative and fun ways to use those minutes and for this we have a number of our ira coaches here and we also have agent melissa hello melissa Hi, Janine. Hey, here she is. And so each month in the active zone, we're going to take about half an hour before our regular call and take a look at some ideas. And this month, because of Valentine's Day and because, you know, everybody else needs to put on at least 20 COVID pounds, uh, we're going to talk food and kitchen appliances. So... Did you ever get an appliance like for the holidays or for your birthday and it sat there in the box because you took it out, you looked at it and said, ah, oh, that's too complicated, too many buttons. I don't know how to use this. And it sat there until you sold it at a garage sale or something. Well, we're going to try to get out of that habit and make those appliances do something. So... I'm going to throw it up to our coaches. Do you guys, and throw your hands in the air, and we will get you here. But how many of you guys have used an IRA agent to help you get a kitchen appliance set up? I bet there are a lot of you. So let's see some hands. All right. Done yet. <laughs> <laughs> everybody's kind of going going don't be shy coaches don't, don't be, shy. be shy don't be shy because <laughs> i'm gonna start have to ask i'm going to start to have to ask some questions here and get my tongue untangled yeah so okay so melissa i, I wait oh uh, well uh, uh, wait, we well, have somebody we oh. have a we have a phone number i i don't know if you're a coach so i'm gonna unmute you but you um, know what we're gonna unmute you anyway so have so, you used hello, a person IRA? with a 914 area code um all right from upstate new york right it's or probably cold central out there. new york yeah hi there I okay you did. might you oh, might do i have to have to unmute maybe there we go okay there we, yeah. go. And, there we go okay we got it now and hey um my name is louise and i've been using iowa for about th maybe three four years i lost oh, wow. more of my vision uh, you know, about five years ago, and so I was been helping out a lot. Um, I use Ira for my stove and my microwave because my stove is a digital stove, and oh. it's all the display, and yep. we can't I read that. that. My husband, yeah. yeah, my husband's blind too, and so we, we'll, you know, we we'll use Ira to let them read the, the, um, the, you know, the whole the numbers and everything like that. Oh. And, and that's how we've been doing that for now. Oh, great. Awesome. Now, Louise, do you have a regular burner stove or do you have a flat top? It's the burner stove. Ah, I great. prefer those. Believe me. Yes, I, me yeah. too. <laughs> Every time I look for apartments or houses, I always look for the burner stoves. I um, have a friend who loves the yep. flat top stove. And we had one when we moved to this house and I hated it. It was like two days and it was out. <laughs> so, yep. yeah. But um, she actually uses IRA to line things up on the burners until she got used to kind of the layout of the stove. And now she's used to it. But occasionally, if she's got a new pot or something to put on there she'll call an agent and ask if it's lined up on the on the burner um do you have any little things louise like an air fryer or i don't like have that? that no but we use uh, we also use it for a uh, microwave sometimes like to set the time or if the mm -hmm. we have it with little braille dots on it but sometimes the dots will fall off oh and, yeah you know so that that that's been helpful too 
great. Well, it's our husband <laughs> Barry, and Ira is very helpful because uh, our stove is uh, very old and a microprocessor is going on it. And, oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Temperature keeps jumping around, so we have to make sure when we begin what temperature we uh, want to set it at. Gotcha. It's really been good. Mm-hmm. So I might be buying a new stove soon, so any good uh-huh. suggestions? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> have accessible oh, talk, a, talking oh. ones? Or, yeah. I yeah, mean, so you know. no, The question is, have you, you looked at stoves with an agent yet? Yeah, no, I, that's what I said. That might be a good thought soon because we need something might. soon. Yeah, okay, then we will, we'll yeah, think of that. And I okay. know there are, I believe there are some that actually have smart apps, so you can control them from your phone, from the phone app. But I don't know how accessible some of those apps are. So anybody And I'm not that there? tech. I'm somewhat <laughs> techy, but not, not that techy. But I'm, uh-huh. I'm, I'm getting there, though. I'm getting there. We'll, yeah. we'll get you there, never fear. And, oh, good, uh, okay. Yeah. I've been going and, into any stores right now. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to go yeah, into stores no. right now. It's I don't part blame of you on that one. Yeah. Don't okay. blame me but, on that one. But this is good talking to you. We will listen to you all the time, and, uh, and I'm, glad, I'm glad you're going to have this part, so we will be on all the time, and oh, other great. questions we'll talk when we can, too. It's a pleasure to awesome. get to talk to you guys. Yeah, okay, same absolutely. Here. Some new voices here from uh, cold and blustery central New York. And, um, All right. Yeah. So we do have Shay, who is an interactive coach. Hey, um, so Shay. Will, um, yeah. Then, there we go. Finally. Crap. There <laughs> we are. So, Miss <laughs> Shay. So talk to us a little bit about, uh, you know, accessible appliances that you guys have, because I know you and Ryan are both, well, Ryan is the, the master cook, as I understand it. No, well, sometimes she is, most, mostly. He, so. Okay, well, good. You I just I'm follow good. directions off a box. I'm great at following <laughs> that's, directions see, that's off a box. My, you just described my house right um, now, Shay. That's pretty much it, yes. <laughs> um, and that's actually one of the things I get agents to do because if it's something I know I'll use again I'm not going to remember the measurements and everything off the box to remember Mm -hmm. later Um, so I make agents write them down and email them to me uh, because then I have them again Ah, for the next time I use the same thing yeah and then I just have it there ready and I'm like okay I know how to do this now it's in an email somewhere (laughs) yes (laughs) Um, yes really definitely awesome and we and also have a deep fryer that <gasps> continually changes. The gauge on the top will change, and so to make sure the temperature is always set right. And it's just a dial, so it's not anything like touch screen, but you want to make sure those numbers don't jump around. Gotcha. Um, and so that one's always a good thing to check with agents as well. Gotcha. Wow. And we have another long time explorer. Yeah, I was Cam. just meaning I called people out now. I'm just announcing. Yeah. Hey, I know that I ran coach. Cam Drake. Hello, you guys. Hey. So, do you have some kitchen appliances that you have worked with agents to set up or even find recipes for? Because I guess, like, cooking with an air fryer is a little bit different than cooking, you know, with a deep fryer or other ways. To be honest, uh, I kind of got like uh, most of my appliances I got years before I got a new fire was around. Mm-hmm. So I really have not had that experience. Mm. But how about uh, finding me. recipes? You caught me noshing neck wafers. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my husband is a huge Necco wafer fan. I love so them. I, I just I... found them. Uh, <laughs> um, actually, I haven't done a lot of cooking lately, but I do know that w- w- where we've had our, uh, it's not exactly uh, kitchen, re- I mean, exactly uh, uh, recipe related, but there is that odd bottle. Okay, I just had an experience today. I guess this qualifies. Uh, Dave found a package of country pork country ribs that oh. in the freezer. So hmm. he brought them in, and first I asked an agent to identify that they were in fact the pork ribs. He was pretty sure they were, and they were. And then I forgot, and I called back and said, "Could you please tell me what the what the weight is of these things?" So I guess that could qualify because it was a oh, kitchen Oh, absolutely. Event. Absolutely. All that information on that 
meat package. You, you don't know how many times in my house I have been summoned to get an agent to figure out what the mystery meat might be. Because <laughs> <laughs> after well, it's been in that fridge, like... and, and Melissa, how many times have you handled a call with somebody where, you know, like, what is this? Can you tell? <laughs> Well, I ago, believe I I've lost track of that, that one. <laughs> you know, I used to braille all that stuff. It's nice that know, I don't have to do mm-hmm. that anymore. When it comes to kitchen appliances, like I'll say it, like I've used Ira um, when, you know, especially when we were looking for that air fryer or not, I'm sorry, not the air fryer. I don't really care much for the air fryers, the deep fryer. Mm-hmm. Um, especially when I was looking for it, um, you know, to even find kitchen appliances to, uh, uh, to use new things to find. Uh, and then definitely like we have uh, the flat panel ovens. So, you know, we have the burner ovens, oh. but we have the, the ones where you have to, and it's not touch screen in the sense where you can't put your hand on it or, and it will be, um, although I have seen those ovens, but we do have one where it's a flat one that you have to push in on the, the screen. Oh, and, and you, you can feel actually feel where it's, yeah, um, that's, that's my microwave. And, you can't. and so like I have that. to use an agent <laughs> to be able to set the, the oven temperature, you know, especially if you want to set uh, the your oven to a specific thing or to preheat your oven. And so really Ira comes in super handy there when uh, you're in the kitchen um, to be able to, to get that. And that's that a pretty short call that, too. And, Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. One of those calls that would be easily under five minutes. Actually, it's probably under two minutes when you think about it. Um, just to quickly go in there and say, hey, is this set to, you know, the correct amount? Is this, yeah. uh, you know, where it's supposed to be? And So, Melissa, what are some of the things that you have helped people with in the kitchen and, and regarding food and, and appliances? Sure. Uh I love kitchen calls. Every time a call comes through and I see a counter or a stove, I get excited (laughs) because they're always so much fun. Um, Some things that I have seen as IRA use cases in the kitchen would probably be identifying canned, bagged, other food items that maybe don't have any tactile indication on them. Um, Reading instructions like Shay was talking about is super common. Um, Checking expiration dates. Um, Looking for... (laughs) mold, bruises, other signs of decay on, on fruits, vegetables, things like that. Um, checking the doneness level of food. So cutting into meat and looking for color or texture to kind of indicate if something might be ready. Um, oh, no, that's a good one. One of my favorite Ira kitchen calls is decorating cakes. <laughs> oh my I gosh! I can't help you but love know, like, how. How do you? What's? How, yeah, how, how do you do that? Yeah, that one sounds. Uh, now tell I'm curious. us, tell us, how do you it do this? It is so much fun. So the experience that I've had up until this point is that the explorer will utilize a rotating cake stand, and usually be trying to apply smooth icing and then do decoration from there. So using a, um, a sharp angled icing tool that they'll press against the side, I'll kind of indicate to them increase pressure, decrease pressure, move up a quarter inch, move down a quarter oh, inch. Wow. And while they spin the cake wow. pan, you get to continue icing the cake until everything has been covered and then add all the fun little bits that go on top. So that's a really exciting one. Those don't happen a whole lot, but when they do, I'm I'm really Have you really done any um, cake writing, like to write anything on the cake yet? I have not, but I would love to. That sounds like a blast. Call Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, Ryan's going to start writing on cakes. Uh oh, be Oh, no way. I don't think I have the. I, I, I don't have the hand motion for that. Like I, I would push too hard on the frosting, or I'd, I, I'd honestly probably eat it before I got to that point. On <laughs> <laughs> one of the beautiful things about that is it can always be fixed. So Ooh. there is nothing that you can do that cannot be undone in Ooh. the cake decorating world. So you can always just cover it up and start over Ooh. and move from there. So That's it's very, uh, very pliable for sure. Cool. So have you looked up recipes for people? Absolutely. Um, I have both looked up recipes in general in the sense of I want to make meatloaf, just find me something Mm -hmm. Um, all the way down to I saw this one specific recipe two to three weeks ago, and I can't remember what it is, but it looked like this. Um, So it can kind of go both ways where an explorer might know exactly what it is that they're looking for. Or they might be looking for something a little bit more broad, and we've got a little bit of, uh, of freedom to, to kind of get our feet wet in the internet and search for it. 
cool. So do we have anybody else out there? I think we got a couple more hands raised, right? We do have a couple hands raised. Let's go ahead and grab some All right. here. Let's... Yeah. So uh... I always wanted to know what the sous vide cooking is. It sounds very strange to me. And I know there's a special cooker that you use, but I have no clue what it is. We're and hear somebody from Londa. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Londa. It takes a second All to unmute. Right. Yep. So when I there unmute you guys, there's a button there that pops is. up on your screen, whether it's on the phone or the computer, and you have to make sure that you hit yeah. that unmute button. So. It's easier to find it on the computer, but I was in a hurry, yep. so I'm using <laughs> my phone. <laughs> so I, I've done... Um, I love Instant Pots, and I borrowed several oh, different boy. ones and tried them. Yeah. I have had agents make me button layouts. Oh, oh, I because like this. So that you can remember where the buttons are. And what we do is generally the agent and I will go over it together. And then I'll tell the agent how I want them to structure it so that it makes sense later when I go to read it. Ah, Gotcha. Um, and that's a great you, idea. Because you can't always go from left to right. Like you might have the, the up and down buttons and you need to know which ones those are. And then you've got buttons for your different presets. Um, and then I use my Instant Pot. I have a Duo Crisp, which is an Instant Pot. But then it also has an air fryer lid. Oh, my. Um, but it... Um, remembers for each setting the last thing you had it set to oh that's nice that's cool. it's nice but you if you forget where you last had it set it can be <laughs> a nightmare <laughs> wow so um, now you can reset it to factory you can reset that one to factory defaults mm -hmm. if you forget there is a way to do that uh, but i just will often just call an agent and say how do I have this set? <laughs> it's easier. Um, the other thing I use them for is I have a George Foreman grill. And the one oh, thing I that I love my Foreman grill. Yes. But you can't tell when it's ready. Yeah. Yep. Because it's a light. It's a light. Yep. I tried um, using a light probe, but in what? order to get it, getting close enough was like, oh, that's not going to work. That's hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because they get hot on the outside. Mm -hmm. Um, and the thing I haven't done yet, but that I've thought about doing is, um, I watch a lot of instant pot cooking videos. Oh, oh and okay. the one thing that I've thought about having the agents do is some of them could use, there's one guy particularly who I haven't used any of his recipes because he needs more description. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Um, <laughs> there is a way to use those minutes of watching those videos. And yeah, yeah, I'm just going to have to get on and start watching some. I was going to say, somehow I think Melissa would really enjoy that kind of a call. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'll have to find out when Melissa mm -hmm. is on. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all going to ask that now. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Londa. Do we have anybody else? We have a few quick minutes here before we get to the challenge. Ba -ba -da -da. There will be music people. next time. <laughs> so let's yeah. go to... Wow. Now, our let's friends... Let's hear from in... Kenya. Ah, hello, Kenya. All right. We'll let Kenya unmute. Our friends from Australia... Hello. Gave us some great ideas. Hey, Kenya, how are you? Hello, all right. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. All right. And I've been with Ira since uh, the Las Vegas convention. Ooh. Oh, that was a good convention. That's when I joined. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so I had got an air fryer for my birthday <gasps> two years ago. <laughs> yep. And... Never, never tried it yet, but I did call one night so I could warm up some pizza. Mm -hmm. and found out that it wasn't plugged up said so I said all right I'll try again the next time but I do have my air fryer ready now for this challenge it's plugged up and I'm awesome. all ready to go 
<laughs> awesome. So now Kenya is going to be calling and Kenya did a great segue there. That was amazing because we're going to have a challenge for everybody to go and fix a meal. And if you got help doing that with an agent, either setting up your oven, whatever it is you had the agent help you do with that meal, take a picture including having the agent take a picture of that delicious meal and put it up on social media. And if you don't know how to do that or you haven't, you don't know how to post a picture, your agent can help you do that. And you can put it on Facebook. You can put it on Twitter. You can put it on Instagram. We have a surprising number of blind people on Instagram now that it's more accessible. And uh, please definitely follow us on Instagram. We are Instagram.com slash IRAIO. And actually, you can put your hashtag with that so we can see those pictures and share them. And our hashtag is on my terms. So if you put hashtag which is the shift of the number three on your keyboard on my terms we will see those amazing photos of your delicious food or your kitchen or whatever you would like to show us um, i want to see some of these decorated cakes that is so cool now i'm going to have to make some cupcakes or something so i can decorate them just practice with an agent that i i'm i'm still stunned by that can you help me get a pie crust right melissa because pie crust to the bane of my existence I, my mother made these beautiful latticework pie crusts and I, I, I drape it over the bowl and it splits in half in the middle and <laughs> I all up, about you know, being the right thickness yes. definitely could get some agent assistance mm -hmm. that one. I end up cutting it up and making cinnamon rolls out of it so <laughs> Nothing none, wrong with a good cinnamon roll. Exactly. <laughs> none will go to waste there. Well, for those of us that are uh, that are guide dog users too, I I uh, I've heard rumor, um, and I'm and I want mm -hmm. I want to try this, but I know there's a way to make dog treats as well. Yes. Um, and so doing that would be fun. Ooh, <laughs> ooh! You could have an agent help you look up recipes. For and I dog saw Pam's treats. hand go back up. So hey, Pam. Okay. The last couple minutes here, we're going to grab, whoops. I, yeah, it, I it, just wanted to say it's not, I was going to, uh, I before I realized I would be getting off topic, but maybe I could relate <laughs> it. You were talking about extra minutes. Yes, We have a friend and she is a wonderful cook. She is an explorer. All right. And she had extra minutes once, at least once, maybe she's done it since. And so she had an agent go through coupons. She had a whole bunch of mail. There were a bunch of coupons. Oh, so, boy. Uh, she went through and picked out a bunch of There's store coupons with her extra, minutes, her extra minutes. That's awesome. And that, boy, I hadn't even thought of that one. But that's a great way to use up your extra minutes. And even if you go online to some of the store websites, they've got a coupon area that you can get the coupons from and use them if you're doing like an Instacart order or, you know, um, any of the other uh, uh, grocery type order services. And uh, wow, I, I like that, man. Well, I was just going to say, and, and, you know, and, and Melissa, I'm sure you could speak to this, but I've actually used Ira just to go online and find deals for places all the time. I mean, if I'm oh, wanting to yeah. shop on a website or find certain things, an Ira agent is pro at Google searching <laughs> deals. I mean, I'm telling you. <laughs> yep. Yep. You ever want to find a discount code? Just ask your agent. They'll go looking for it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So our folks from Australia had some suggestions. Um, we had somebody who wanted to make a vegetarian curry. And then somebody else wanted to make a pumpkin pie. And apparently, and I did not know this, but pumpkin pie in Australia is sort of a, an odd thing because they eat pumpkin like we eat potatoes. And when mm -hmm. I visited Australia, I ate a lot of pumpkin in a lot of ways that I had never eaten pumpkin before. So, and it was really good, but pumpkin pie was like, you make pie out of that? <laughs> and so <laughs> their challenge was to do a vegetarian meal and put the pictures up. So again, um, those pictures would go up on our social media sites, uh, to, you know, on your social media account with the hashtag on my terms. So let's see in the 
got a minute or two left here. Do we have anybody else with any cool oh, and fun ideas? Many hands up. Many so hands, see. yes. This is a All right. very popular topic. Let's go. Oh, I with bet. Grant. I'm starving, and here's Grant Downey. Hello, yeah, Grant. Yeah, I'm, I'm very hungry at this point. I haven't had dinner yet. So. Gonna, you, know, <laughs> I, I, you know, I had some celery before I came in here. I'm like, that's not doing it. <laughs> well, hello, Grant. How are you? And while we're waiting for Grant to unmute. Mm-hmm. Bring. Right, I'm going to unmute somebody else. Okay. And see who gets it first. And let's, see. Here. Let's, see who we get, let's see who gets it first. Mm-hmm. Who's going to get the unmute? Ooh, and somebody race. just put something in the chat that one of the instant pots is a dehydrator, so you can actually dehydrate. Oh, Debbie some dog got it first. Treats. So we got Debbie yeah. down. Here. Yeah, He's maybe. Hey, Debbie, muted. how are you? <laughs> I don't know. He had a question. <laughs> um, I'm friends with Barry and Louise, so I'm glad to hear that they're on too. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah. Um, I haven't used Ira to set up an appliance other than like a TV to tell me about the buttons on the remote and that kind of thing. But I did use it and it probably could be done again um, to help me with using the self-cleaning feature of the oven. Ah. Because it had instructions and I had the book. Mm-hmm. I even found the page for them so that, you know, they can look at it and mm-hmm. tell me what I had to do. And we had to set the clock on the stove, which was not set. Oh boy. Because you, you know, because you have to t- leave it, for a certain number of hours or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so they, they helped me with setting that um, that clock and it's all, you know, digital. So yep. that was pretty cool. <laughs> you know, oh. push, no, push this one, push that one, one more time, you know? So <laughs> it, it was cool the way we got that done. But like I said, it could be used again. In fact, I talked to the same agent the other day that I spoke with. I remember telling her, I think you helped me with cleaning my oven. Um, and we did some shopping the other day, and they are good at doing that. They gave me a recommendation for something that they've used, and we'll see how it goes. It sounds like it's going to work out. So um, I do have an Echo Show, and that's got a screen. And I ah. did have them tell me about the button. So next we're going to hook it up and see what more help I need, because that doesn't come with a remote. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Which I think is dumb. But <laughs> well, anyway. yeah, I was going to say, but maybe yeah. they figure you're, you can talk to it. So, probably. Yeah. So, Interesting. But that's for another time. So, mm-hmm. anyway, so I see that, uh, yeah, I see that uh, Peg has a sous vide cooker and we have a couple of other notes here. Well, how, um, about we, how about we let Peg? Yes, let's let Peg us tell us about, about the sous vide cooker. cooker. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm intrigued. <laughs> I'm very intrigued. <laughs> Hi, Peg. Hello. There she well, is. My Anova cooker is a very small circulating device that you use, and I use it in a six quart stock pot. And I also bought a plastic square large container specific for sous vide. And I use an iPhone app. But sometimes someone in my kitchen hits the button on uh, a screen of the device and you don't know whether it's changed or not. So I have called Ira to verify that my screen is still working as I intended. Ah, excellent. So, but the apps are usually pretty good. I usually use Ira when I'm setting up, like I have an Amazon. combo oven and I use that when my internet gets disconnected and I need to set that up. I have an air fryer that's Kasoi that is only internet and echo and there are no there are no buttons on it. So I have talked to Ira about that. I have a Wi-Fi instant pot that I got some assistance setting up. And my favorite thing to use Iva for is finding the extra recipes on packages of food. Like there's a muffin mix that I like that has a wonderful breakfast egg bake that you can't discover with barcode breeding. Ah, yeah, yes. you can't. So I like to use it for those kinds of things. And then one of the odd things that I did when my husband was being very particular about cutting boards, 
Mm-hmm. They have cutting boards and seats, the not quite silicone ones, but they're made out of flexible, some kind of plastic. And they have pictures on vegetables or chicken or beef. And you only know by those pictures or the colors of those boards. So I had either help me sort those boards. Oh, great idea. So, and that way you can yes. keep the meat away from the vegetables yes, when you're yes. cutting. That's a brilliant yes, idea. Yes. That's a brilliant So, yes. Wow, you guys have brought it. As I expected, so to our ideas. first so many thoughts. viral active zone. And I'll tell you what, you guys were absolutely active. So please do not forget to tag those photos on social media with the on my terms hashtag and show us all these cool things that you were able to do with Ira. Well, I want to thank Agent Melissa and um, get it. Oh, see, I want a cupcake now. <laughs> Oh, that's so bad. I really want a cupcake with the big icing. Big you know where to find us, Janine. <laughs> yep, I sure do. I sure do. Mm-mm-mm. Well, now it is time for the monthly Ira Explorer Call. And woo, do we have a lot of stuff for you tonight. <clears throat> so I am Janine Stanley, the director of customer communication here at Ira. I have our product manager, Ryan Bishop, with me. Hey, Ryan. Hello, everybody. And before you announce the next person, give me a second, give me a second, give me a second, give me a second. There we go. And there she is. And we have Miss Emily Hill, the director of customer experience with us today. Hi, Explorers. Yeah, my gosh, these guys are, um, everybody's going to go out and decorate cakes now. <laughs> no, this is going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to, to all the cake decorating calls. I'll I know. I, I was shocked. I had no idea that you could decorate cakes with Ira. That's way cool. So tonight in Ira News, we have a lot of different things for folks. I'm going to start out with a really short tech tip here. Some of you who have the iPhone 12 have been having difficulty with overexposed photos that end up looking a bit blurry. And so we actually found a fix for this. And what you want to do is you want to go into your camera app and there's a button that's right next to the flash button and it is called the low light button. And you wanna double tap on that and make sure that it is set to either zero or it's off. And what this does is it detects the light level and then allows you to, it automatically adjusts the exposure time. Well, unfortunately, Sometimes it's not always right, and it's not the greatest if you're trying to take pictures of printed documents. So um, you can do that. And then to make that setting permanent, you're going to go over, and this is all done in the camera app, but then you're going to go to your settings app in iOS, and you will go to the camera portion of the settings app. Then you'll go to, um, I'm going to miss a step here, preserve settings. And under preserve, preserve settings, you're going to, going to go down to creative controls and you want to turn creative controls on. And what that will do is save whatever settings are on your camera at that time. And they're not going to change the next time you open the camera app or your agent uses the camera app to do something. So if you have any questions about that or you want to check it with an agent, um, your agents can go over that process with you to make sure that your iPhone 12, and that's for the 12, the 12 Pro, and the 12 Pro Max, to make sure that they are all taking awesome pictures. So, Ryan, let's see. What's going on in the world of product management these days? You have been super busy. And see, he's, he's super busy You know busy what? No, I, I literally, I, so I have two mute buttons, one on Zoom and one on my headset. I forgot I used the one on my headset today, so there we go. Um, you know, Janine, I'm not coming to you today with a product management thing, but I'm coming to you today with a semi-update from customer care. Um, so, uh, you know, back uh, to the care land here for a little bit. Um 
So I He's putting on his Care Bear suit, folks. You know, I, I am. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I was, you know, just for, for fun, uh, some of you may remember the Care Bear stuff from back in the day. I was actually Fun Shine Bear. I don't know if I ever. Ooh, I, 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 I did ever, not know that. Yeah, well, I was. Yeah, I don't know if I ever shared that uh, in any of that these That explains calls, this update then, doesn't it? <laughs> um. <laughs> well, you know, guys, <laughs> let me let me first start out by saying, you know, there's so many ways to get a hold of our customers customer care team, but I come to you today with a new feature that we are opening up. And I guess this could be considered product management, I guess. I don't know, product management, customer <laughs> care, you know, however you want to look at it. Um, but we've just launched a new ability for you to get a hold of your favorite customer care agent. So maybe you don't have time to get a hold of them on the phone right away. Maybe you need something that's a little bit more not real time. Maybe customer care wants to get a hold of you for a quick update and they need to let you know something. We have now unveiled texting. So you can now text your customer care agents. Now let me, uh, your customer care team. Now let me first start out by saying this is only to the customer care. This is only for stuff where, that you would call the standard 800 number four. Um, but uh, so it won't reach any IRA agents. Um, that's the first thing I'll say. Um, the second thing I will say is it will not come from the customer care number. So for example, in the UK, you'll get texted from a plus four, four number, not the 800 number that is a UK number. Um, in the United States, it is an 858 number, um, not the 800 number. So I will read those numbers out to you guys shortly. And I'll also put them in the chat. Um, yep. For those that, uh, so that way you know that this random number is not actually trying to talk to you about your IRA <laughs> account when really. Yeah, that's right. Um, no one is, thing is, is, is that customer care, bombing. customer care, when they message you, will always let you know that this is X and, or so and so from customer care. So this is Emily from IRA customer care when they send you a message. Mm -hmm. um, so that way they, you know who's talking to you. And of course, um, as always, you can call the number that's texting you and it will connect you to the customer care phone line. So if you um, save this number to your contacts, whatever you decide to do, you will be able to call that number and get to the phone tree and talk to your favorite Care Bears. I know I love talking to them when I call in. Um, <laughs> they're great people. But just so that way you have another way of talking to your customer care team. This is so, going to be really handy for our friends in Australia and in the UK who are in absolutely. time zones other than if you've got a problem you can actually get that message to us pretty quickly via text so uh, but we now have our fearless leader CEO Mr. Troy Tilio with us for the first IRA Explorer call of 2021. Hello Troy. Hello everyone. Hey. Welcome to 2021. <laughs> I'm finally able to uh roll that off my tongue i was still saying 2020 i oh, wrote 2020 you know. for like three days don't feel bad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2020 i'm always reminded by my bankers like you always want to fill out the whole the whole uh four four digits but i think i'm i think i'm trained but it's it's great to great to be here um can you explain like is there a reason Troy? like why why would you write out like the whole 2020 like I think it, what is it, the... it has to it has to do with the fact that you can, if it's just, if it's got 21, there's a way that you could add some digits and, and I don't even remember, that's just my bank or something like you, 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 you could, you could, I guess, scam a check somehow, like, Interesting. Yeah. Later. Yep. Um, I should know that, but I just follow what my banker tells me. <laughs> do what they tell you, cash the check. <clears throat> I don't <laughs> think we do that many checks, by the way, I'm, I, I abhor paper, um, as, as anyone knows um because it's easy easily and, lost and that is why he is the ceo of a tech company folks <laughs> <laughs> yep there you go biggest awesome I, my, my awesome. kids even my wife um i annoy them sometimes i even have a for for you guys who know what we all know what email is but there's a tool that's pretty popular in tech called slack you might have heard of slack <laughs> and uh we have a family slack channel we have a family slack so instead of doing email we send each other slack and they think i'm weird um, <laughs> it's text text on steroids folks it's, steroids. it's 2021 guys uh, yes there you, yeah. <laughs> there you go there you go well troy we are excited because we're going to be at csun that's our next big announcement right it is our next big announcement and 
it's a reminder to me personally, um, you know, it was last February that I, that I took on and put on the CEO hat and the CEO pants and that's um, right. It's your first, anniversary. Yeah. And my first, yeah. uh, my first big event that I was not, you know, I'd been with Ira for a long time and been to CSUN plenty of times with Simone and Mike Randall and I, and CSUN also for me personally represents kind of one of the first times I frankly got introduced to this community in at any scale up until um, I joined IRA. Like I, I would go to the office, I'd meet with Simone and we talk about the technology and the product and what we're doing. And, um, but it was at CSUN that my, my mind was blown in the way that all the assistive technology that's out there and really kind of understanding some of the, the needs and, and what's been done. And um, it was last March at, at CSUN that, um, well, two, two or three things were going on. COVID was in the vocabulary. In fact, um, mm -hmm. you remember we CSUN was almost canceled and last yeah. minute some of the larger sponsors started, you know, backing away and, and I don't blame them, but I just remember like all of a sudden the- That exhibit hall was it, big it, and empty. Yeah, it was a big cavernous <laughs> one, but it also allowed me personally to spend more time with, with people both explorers and uh, and some of the CEOs of the other companies and or leaders and and it's just it's hard to imagine it's been a full year right and yeah. and here we're going to do another uh, virtual uh, uh, CSUN but it is it is kind of the CES for our industry and I and I love it I love hearing about what everyone else is doing um, and and I'm excited that we're going to be there because I actually find in some ways the virtual conferences allow us a better chance to talk with our yeah. with our audience um yeah it's not noisy you don't have to stand in line we can get everyone in a room it's 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 a little in some ways easier to connect although i do prefer in person um as a, as a human i guess i don't know i think we're going to get a lot more opportunities for people yeah. because the exhibit hall is think, free but you yeah. will have to register for your expo visitor pass and we have a link to do that i believe that will be in our newsroom if not today it will be up there uh this week to register for your pass so you can come sorry. and check us out yeah yeah that's so cool. we have a question from one of our explorers, Kyle, who has asked Troy if you and Emily can talk a little bit about agents helping folks to fill out their tax returns because it's that time of year. Yeah, of course, no. happy to. Yeah. Kyle, thanks yeah, for asking. Say, Emily, you go. This is good. So <laughs> agents are absolutely able to assist with filing taxes. And the best way to do that is by using your preferred tax software. And agents are certainly able to assist in reading those pesky documents that employers send. I know W-2s are super hard to read, especially if you're using the screen reader. So happy to fill in any blanks, happy to kind of plug and play information. But as always, you as the explorer are in the driver's seat. So you're making all the choices. Our agents are not tax experts, but if you're using a tax software, um, personally, I use TurboTax. So in using TurboTax, it asks you all of the questions the agent can then ask you right for example one of the ones that often comes up in my life is did you move this year and my answer is <laughs> usually yes and so then how you have many to, times though how many times did you, where did you move <laughs> so you have to kind of calculate all the different times that you spent um, in one state versus another but the agents will just assist with walking you through the platform and the questions that it asks, helping to read documents, et cetera. So you hey, provide all the brain have, power, but we're happy to provide all the computer work. I have a question because you guys may or may not know, um, prior to Ira, both Simon and I, uh, along with some others, we worked at Intuit. We worked in here in San Diego and we worked at the headquarters of TurboTax. And so Ooh. I know a lot about TurboTax more than I ever thought I would know, um, <laughs> the, good, the good and the bad. I mean, it's a, it is some great software, but I know from working there, and I know from just doing my own taxes over the years, one of the hardest things is getting all the paperwork together, right? Like you get, you get mailed, uh, you know, all kinds of documents. And, you know, if you have a house, you got to get your mortgage, you know, there's deductions and that's for anyone. That's, that's the real pain, right? Often it's just getting those documents. Um, I would imagine that when we've helped people in the past, a lot of it is just taking pictures of these documents that are often paper so that you can upload them or, or, or read them. Is that, you know, 
leading the witness. Yeah, here. definitely. We take a lot of pictures, <laughs> um, especially if you are working with a tax professional. Um, this year, I imagine most people are going to be doing work with tax professionals, but remotely. So mm -hmm. if your yep. tax professional is requesting a certain documentation, happy to take pictures, I would suggest as always, if you want a picture taken, tell the agent what the reason is that you would like that picture taken so that I can then ensure that the picture is lined up appropriately. For example, if you are sending a picture of a document to your tax professional, it probably doesn't matter if I have the photo lined up exactly perfectly because that person is going to visually look at it, look for the information they need and then move on. Versus if you are wanting to upload a photo onto a tax software, you're not working with professional, then it is probably a lot more likely that the agent needs to be perfect with the photo because the AI may not be able to find the correct information otherwise, right? So just yep. kind of getting into the nitty gritty of it, but as always, you never need to explain yourself to an IRA agent, but context can be helpful in accomplishing your task efficiently. So wherever that kind of shakes out for you personally, that's my best recommendation. Yep. I've and got one more thing to add on this. Um, so a lot of people go, hey, wait a minute. Uh, Intuit sponsors small business and QuickBooks. Certainly they must do TurboTax, right? Like, you know, of course I can do my taxes for free using IRA and TurboTax. And the answer is not yet. And so if you're so not inclined, um, if you're so inclined, uh, and it won't be for this tax season. So I, I wish I had like the, the mic drop, you know, to, to inform <laughs> you that it's, um, we are working with them. Intuit's a great sponsor. Ted Drake is heads accessibility at Intuit. He's he's a great partner. Um, but I would say this: if if that's something you want, um, I would just email him. He's kind of amassing some evidence, and you know we're preparing to talk to uh, Intuit this this fall about the next tax season. So if you want to drop him a line, it's just Ted underscore Drake at Intuit.com. And frankly, he would love to hear from you like on, on, and by the way, I should even plug further. If you ever hit accessibility issues at Intuit, like, um, like Ryan Bishop did, right? Ryan, the other day you, uh, we, we had a call with Ted and you, you shared like a challenge yeah, you had and, and that he eats that up. Like he, they, they even have a, a webpage for this. Like he wants to hear, he's the guy who- I'm actually pretty sure that. it's already fixed. I haven't needed it. Like, <laughs> yeah, wow. I'm just saying- He's pretty, he he's pretty crazy about that. Like he's- He wants to know- Email him as much or as little as as much or little detail as you you have. That's his job. He loves hearing from you, and he likes partnering with Iron. And if you plug and say, "Hey, when you get in TurboTax, that helps him, helps me help you." Awesome, thank you so much, Troy. And a really quick tip for you on documents: if you are going to be photographing documents um, to upload and things like that. Um, get a dark cloth, um, gray, dark brown, black, navy blue, something of contrast to put that document on so it shows up a little bit better. And that actually really helps in terms of, you know, getting things set up and uh, making sure that that they're lined up and that they look good if you're going to upload them. And some, uh, some programs will ask for that kind of background. So just a little tip there. And uh, as somebody who files the long form and has to keep track of every receipt <laughs> in my house, um, I can tell you the agents have been fantastic about helping to label those throughout the year and then make sure that we um, are getting the right ones in the right places at the right time. I'll tell you, my favorite tax thing with an agent is just deciphering those W-2s because I'm telling Ooh. you, man, a, you know, <laughs> when I go on TurboTax and it says, please, information, please enter information from box 4A, agents yep. are so good at finding box 4a whereas a screen reader is not so i'll uh, say no <laughs> no I, the first time i actually scanned one of those with lcr i thought how in the world am i gonna do this <laughs> wow <laughs> Well, we have Emily with us, and you just heard some great advice about tax season. Emily, we have some other advice, and then we have some results from our customer survey that many of you took uh, at the end of last year. So let, let's start out. Actually, let's start with the customer survey, if you would. 
All right. I start was all fun stuff. like caught my breath, ready to start talking <laughs> in about the extra things that agents can do and now switching tabs. So yeah. <laughs> first off, wanted to say a huge thank you to every member of our community that took the time to respond to our customer survey. I know that it was quite lengthy this year because I had lots of questions for you. So thank you very much for persevering and answering with honesty. Um, I loved reading your insight as did the other members of the IRA team that I have shared some of the details with. And just wanted to start by saying thank you and then moving into some of the results that we had because we were honored, honestly, with your feedback. So after taking a look through some of the uh, survey results, I was totally blown away by how happy you are with the IRA service. So I know that not every member of our community took the time to answer, but I would say again, just a thank you to those who did. And as much as you have shared with me in the survey and outside of the survey, how much IRA means to you, I think that that really showed through in some of these results. So for example, um, some of the results that stuck out was an 80% happiness rating kind of across the board with those individuals who were willing to share about their experience. So that was awesome to see. Personally, I found a lot of value in the two different sides of my team that you answered questions about. So again, my pleasure and joy, I rise to oversee the agent team and the customer care team. And in both cases, it was resounding double thumbs up all around. And just every every person essentially who answered said something along the lines of, the teams are doing great. These are some things that I'd like to see them do better. But overall, I'm really happy. And so that was awesome as the leader of those teams to see. Um, and then again, some other pieces of things that came through loud and clear. I know you would love an update on the glasses. Unfortunately, we don't have an update on glasses for you at this time. We are still waiting to evaluate some of the options on the market. We haven't found anything yet that is worthy of putting the IRA name on it. And so we'll continue to look and know that we hear you loud and clear. You want hands-free, lanyards are great, glasses were better, and I wish that we could speed, like fast track that for you, but that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, and then some other things that I saw pop up pretty often is some strong feelings about the feedback form at the end of each call. Some people said, I absolutely want more than two options on how to rate my agent. And some people said, I love that there's only two options on how to rate the agent. It makes it fast and easy, right? So just one quick reminder of I know that you're prompted at the end of every single call to provide feedback about the agent experience and the session that you had. That is invaluable for us. We want to provide the best IRA experience that you have ever had every single time that you call. And the only way that we can keep doing that is if you tell us about how you felt your experience was, right? So know that when you answer that post-call feedback, that information comes directly to myself and to the agent management team. It doesn't go straight to the agent. This is important because I hear sometimes explorers say like, well, I really was unhappy with that session, but I didn't wanna say anything because I didn't want that agent to feel bad. Number one, you're the nicest person ever. Number two, don't worry. The agent isn't going to get that directly. Instead, it's going to come to me and I'm going to be able to look at that and say, okay, what went wrong? And then we can take that and address with the agent what they can do to improve so that you can continue to have excellent IRA experiences. So thank you for filling out my long survey here at the end of this year. I'm hoping that we end up doing more often much shorter surveys. So keep an ear open for some more from Ira on that front, but also just a thank you for an encouragement to continue sharing your every session feedback. I know that you call Ira when you're busy, so you can also give us feedback after you have completed the task or are less busy with your time by going into the usage tab, accessing the button that says call history, and then you'll have a list there of all of the sessions that you've had. And you can even tell from that screen which of the sessions you've left feedback on and which of the sessions you haven't yet left feedback on. And in that way, you're able to add any additional context that you wish. And again, it comes back to me and then makes it way 
to us being able to tell our agents, hey, you did so good at fill in the blank, but you could have improved at whatever this extra item was, right? So thank you for helping me help you help us get better and keep growing, whatever it is that that ends up looking like or sounding like. I sincerely appreciate each and every member of this community and just wanted to take an opportunity to say thank you. Awesome. And once again, we have explorers providing the perfect segues here. We have a comment from a comment question from when we out in the audience, and she asks if agents ever help give uh, explorers suggestions on being better and uh, being excellent explorers. And Emily, I think that leads into your topic for tonight about what agents can and can't do and, and some ways to restructure kind of thinking about things that you want information about. Yeah. So one way, it's a great question. Um, we don't give feedback directly about explorers. We do give feedback. I'm sorry, someone must be moving into my next door neighbor house because all of a sudden, <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that on the phone, but there's a whole lot of noise in my hallway. <laughs> um, anyways, so we don't give specific explorer feedback unless something happened that would be a violation of IRA's terms of service. I know that usually when I come onto the Explorer call, we talk about the IRA terms of service and then everybody's like, wow, that's a lot to remember. So we'll skip that for today. But if you're interested, please feel free always to review our terms of service at ira.io slash TOS. But agents do provide context about what happened in the session. So for example, we wanna know things about like, how did it go? Were you successful, Agent Emily, at doing what the task was that the Explorer wanted to um, accomplish today? And if not, what could have gone better, right? So that's one example. We ask all kinds of questions of the agents at the end of each call. Um, but that is information, again, internal to IRA. That's not something that we ever share because it is quality assurance and control, right? We want to be able for the agent to have an outlet that was like, oh my gosh, that was so hard. I totally rocked it, but that was eight lanes of traffic plus a railroad track and like <laughs> had to hold my breath the whole way through. Already now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? So whatever it ends up being, um, it's more of like an opportunity for the agent to share with their manager how the session went and where the agent felt like they could do better. So nothing yet about like how to be an excellent explorer per your question, when I but. but Launching in to one tip and trick that I've been hearing about lately is explorers being curious on how to ask an agent about the agent's opinion. And this is where it gets into a little bit of the gray area, right? Because what we want is always, always for the agent's first response when you are seeking information as an explorer to be objective. I want you to know that an agent isn't just filling in the blank and telling you what it is that they think about something, but instead is providing accurate, objective information so that you as the explorer can make your own choices with all the information that's provided. But sometimes that just doesn't work right. Yeah, so what about, as uh, one of my explorers likes to ask, um, I'm congenitally blind. And sure, you can tell me that this is red and that's pink, but like, do people, wear red and pink together. I've never seen anybody wearing red and pink together. So how am I supposed to know if these two colors go together? And the answer is just ask. So the agent will always respond first with that objective information. And then if you say, okay, but like Emily, be serious. Give me your opinion. Would you wear these two things? Well, now, as long as you know that I'm giving you my opinion, I might say, I only wear black, so I wouldn't wear red and pink together, but that's because I'm a boring dresser instead of somebody who's like more willing to take fashion risks, right? None of that is true. It's just all hypothetical, but it comes down to what I don't want is for you to feel like you're having to jump through hoops in order to get the answer. So there's no like magic right question to ask, but hey, Emily, what's your opinion on X is usually a good place to start. Oh. Now, again, it gets a little hairy. Fashion is like pretty easy, right? But for another example, for me personally, I have kind of an olive tone to my skin, so I can't wear yellow. It makes me look green. <laughs> what? Right? Uh, so like maybe you look and you're like, well, I'm, like, does this look good on me? 
Well, depending upon what I can see through the camera, I may or may not be able to actually answer that question. And so it may sound like I'm kind of hemming and hawing about answering, but it's just because maybe I don't have enough information or maybe I don't have the right context or maybe I don't know what kinds of something it is that you're looking for. Another example might be something that happens pretty often to us as our agents is somebody wants to uh, show off their iris service. And so they may point their camera at the person sitting next to them where they're trying to do a demonstration and say, well, describe my, describe this person. What do they look like? Is she oh beautiful? <laughs> Is he handsome? And now it's like, okay, well, um, now I have to use the context clues to guess who is this person to you? Is this your friend that you're trying to rib a little bit and be like, oh no, he's got a big nose. <laughs> or is it your wife that you're trying to be like, oh, tell me all about how beautiful her eyes are, right? Whatever the context is, the more hints you can give the agent, the better the opinion answer is that we're going to be able to output on the other side. So know that first and foremost, right off the bat, it's gonna be objective information. If you want more, if you want different, you are so empowered to ask for that. Just know that once you get into that opinion area, it gets a little hairy about, well, now you're asking my opinion as a person. So my opinion as a person is X, Y, Z, whatever the situation might be. Uh -huh. So I have something that may go to Wenwei's question. Um, let's say I'm, I want to do a PowerPoint and I want to do a really cool looking PowerPoint, but I don't, really know what a really cool looking PowerPoint is. How could I approach that with an agent and say, okay, you know, I know what I want to talk about and I have my outline. How do I make this look really good? Um, what would we do? How could we figure that out together? Yeah, Janine, that's a really good question. Nor so I'm trying to think of like, if you were my explorer and I was your agent and you called it an ask this, kind of how, what's the track that I would personally go down? I'd probably start by ensuring that everything across the board in the PowerPoint presentation that you're working on is formatted consistently. So sometimes, especially with PowerPoint, Ugh. bullets may be wrong or yes. it may be a different color or the margins might be weird or maybe you thought that the box, the text box was big enough, but really it's small, mm. but the you, you've JAWS read it to you. You've looked at my haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't actually, but maybe Jaws read you the whole thing, but visually I can only see half of it because the text box is the wrong size, whatever the situation, fill in the blank, right? So yeah. that's probably where I would start is going through and making sure that font formatting, everything is consistent. And then I'd probably ask you some questions about like, well, what colors do you like? Or uh, if you're presenting to a company, what kinds of do you know what company, like, can you share what company it is? Maybe I can look at their logo and see what kind of colors they do. Maybe I can look for something where it gets a little bit funky is in like um, clip art. Like personally, not really a fan of clip art. And so if I am, if you ask me like, oh, Emily, just like find me an animation of a beating heart on clip art or something, right? I'll be like, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna look for one that's not really cheesy because I don't really like them. And it might take me a long time. And you might start getting flustered, right? Like, Emily, why is it taking you so long to find me a piece of clip art, which I'm sure is present there? And I might be like, well, these are all really lame. Like, do you, are you okay with a really lame one? Or do you want something that's a little bit more professional looking? And then that gets to be your choice. So that's really where this kind of like back and forth conversation becomes super valuable in the IRA service is like, then I can kind of poke and prod you and you can kind of poke and prod me. And then together we can kind of make something magical happen. And that is really the big difference folks in visual interpreting and sort of just describing. It's that back and forth, that interaction and interpreting. And we have a question here in the chat from Albert. Um, I don't get, if you can read that one, Emily, um, but he is asking about a video that he has. Yeah, Albert, I see your question here of, can you ask an IRA agent to describe the video while you record it with Zoom? Yes, you can, but you need to ask the agent's permission to record them. Most of our agents are going to be fine with that, but for on the off chance that an agent may not be, you guys all know this, we talk about this pretty often, IRA is located in California. California for recordings is a two consent state, and so Therefore, we operate on 
requires two people's consent in order to do this thing. So if you're welcome to ask, the agent might tell you no. Personally, I've never known a single agent who says no, but just leaving that door open for if somebody isn't able to provide that recording for you. Um, but most of the time, the answer will be yes. Now, I don't know about using Zoom, as you mentioned. Most explorers, when they are doing this, will put their phone on speakerphone and then use some kind of um, like third party voice recorder. Janine may have good suggestions about brands or types or something like that, but that tends to be the best option for recording agent voice. Yep. And if you have, it, it would depend on, you know, kind of what you're doing the video for. Um, if you're doing it for, you know, product demonstration or something like that, along with the agent, um, then maybe the Zoom screen share would work well. It really depends on what you're doing it doing it for. And, and we're happy to talk that out with you. Also, if you just want to email support and maybe have one of us talk to you about, okay, how can I best do this? I want to do this and I want to get the agent description in there. And how can I do that? And we're, we're happy to talk that process out with you as well. So, um, yeah, great. Well, thank you so much, Emily. Um, again, if anyone has any questions about anything that Emily has talked about here tonight, you can reach us at the customer care number uh, for your country. And I'm going to read, maybe, um, maybe not, because I can't find my Braille, but <laughs> I was going to read them all off to you. But um, the customer care numbers and the one in the U.S. is, of course, one 800 H three five one nine three four. Customer care is open, Ryan, from six a.m. to six p.m. Pacific time here in the U.S. Correct? Correct. That is correct. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. All right. I, I, I had the other ones pulled up, and I didn't have these ones pulled up. And of course, you put me on the spot for the thing I didn't have in front of my face. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I have our one thing in front that we'll be talking about here in a minute. We'll give you the numbers. But our numbers for, and it, folks, I have, I'm going to pull this out to, to show you. Here. I have this big stack of index cards. There are about 25 of them here with various Braille things on them. And the IRA numbers happen to be one of those things. And, uh, and then up. Oh, and then we have some new IRA numbers for you. But our customer our main customer care number in the U.S., is that particular number that I just rattled off to you. We also have an email, support at ira.io, which is universal. That's good for anywhere. If you have a question, what's the local number in my country? Just write to that email. You should, am I correct, Ryan? They should also be able to find that local number in the app, right? I do believe. Right, yep, in under... the tab of the app. Oh, and here's a question from Valerie while we're looking up these numbers. Has an agent ever helped an explorer with their YouTube channel? Oh, boy. Emily. Emily. What can we, Short what answer, can we, Valerie. Oh. The answer is yes, of course. You bet. And some really cool ones, too. Um, we have, and we'll be sharing this as soon as she um, gets it gets it done and gets it ready. But Lucy Edwards in the UK has a very active YouTube channel. And she has used an agent and she has done a video about how to use an agent to help you set up your YouTube channel. So absolutely. And now I have the magic numbers. So I do too. So we just all right. The same time. All right. So and we've got our US numbers. But now for that magic texting feature. Our Oh, awesome. And, and uh, Valerie is all set for this YouTube thing. So that, folks, is another great way to use those extra minutes. Now, if you are going to text customer care, you can, in the U.S. and Canada, you can text 858-242-4457. That's a pretty easy one. And we will also put all of these, Ryan, we'll put them up in the chat for everybody. And we will have them also on email. We'll have them in our weekly email to all of you. So they'll be all over the place. Never fear if you don't get them. Our customer care main number in Australia is, of course, the 61 prefix or zero, I believe, if you're in, no, one if you're in country. Uh, and that is 800 
765-096. That's our main number. And if you are in Australia and you would like to text customer care, you can call 618, I'm sorry, 61488-839-767. And I'll give that one again. And that is the, the country code 61488-839-767. Now, we have our number in the UK, and our customer care number there, the main number, is, uh, and that is no. 44 for the country code, 800-046-5668. That's our main number. And then, do you, do you have the uh, text code, Ryan? I do. It is plus 44, and then 1493 two zero and then two four seven two or you can say two zero ira um it, it, you know, that that works too oh that's cool um, i should reiterate <laughs> that it you know, whether you call the main number or these texting numbers you can still reach your customer care team via phone so if you don't yes. want to memorize all of those numbers you can call one of them whichever one you prefer if you just want to save the texting number they'll all call mm -hmm. your uh local customer care uh, a customer care team yep. near you yep. um, for uh, any needs that you may have. Um, I'll read that UK number again, just so any, in right. case anyone needs it. So it's plus four four one four nine three two zero two four seven two. Awesome. And also remember our phone tree, you can actually have Ira call you back. So if you don't have time to hold um, whatever the case may be for customer care, you can uh, get a call back from them and you can set that up via our phone tree. We're excited to say that is working and we are happy to have you set that up for a call. Uh, now we have a couple uh, quick events this week. On Friday, we have an afternoon at the museum show, and that is going to be at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific Time. And we'll be featuring the Blind History Lady. And uh, Peggy Chung is the Blind History Lady, and she has an extensive website about the history of blind people. And this time we're particularly going to look at blind people of color. So uh, Peggy has some amazing stories that were these gems that nobody had ever read before. And I came across them last year during Black History Month. And so we are going to talk to her on Friday at 4 p.m. Now, this will be one of the times when we actually won't have an agent present with us because guess what? We don't have any pictures to talk about. So we are just going to be talking with Peggy um, and we want you all to come and listen to these amazing stories that she has of people who have made really interesting contributions, who have brought up some really interesting social issues, um, being a person of color and having a disability. So you definitely don't want to miss that. Well, Ryan, I think we might have time to take a question or two. Are you good well, with I that? I just happened to see a hand go up, Janine. Oh, so, all right. Uh, and as, of course, as we say that, multiple hands are going <laughs> Everybody's up Everybody's hands are going up. Yeah. Go. All right, awesome. let's go ahead and grab Miss Autumn. Hello, Autumn. All right, and you may have to unmute yourself. There you go. You are unmuted. There we are. All right. And um, I actually have one question about the number you guys just read for the U.S., the, mm -hmm. the texting number. Mm -hmm. Can you please repeat that again? Oh, absolutely. My fiance is over here typing it in his phone. <laughs> yep, no worries. It <laughs> is 858 <laughs> Awesome. Great. Cool. And, All right. Uh, I thank think, you. Sure thing. Sure thing. And I think the Ira elves need to make a snappy jingle of that. <laughs> you know, I was scared. <laughs> be, be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. We also have a question from, wow, a lot of phone numbers have questions. Oops. All right. Let's talk to All some right. phone numbers. Um, so, 
we're going to hear from a phone number in the 914 area code. I believe we actually talked to you oh. earlier. So Hey. Hey, it's Barry and uh, Louise again. Um, we oh. tried to sign up for CSUN. There's a field that says username. What is meant by that? Aha. That is a very good question because you know what? We haven't tried to sign up for it yet, I, was just, I don't know. <laughs> That's hmm. a very good question. But um, this might be something that we might get an agent after. So um, we may be able to get the answer for you on that tomorrow to take a look at that. Um, they okay. may want you to create a username. I'm not sure. Or they may just want you to put an email address in there. Oftentimes yeah, there's a field for the email, and it yep. says a username for another uh -huh. field. Let me see. Okay. Well, Ryan is going to check I'll that. look that up really quick and see if I can get you an answer now. But if not, then uh, we'll definitely get that answer for you and yeah. get it out in our next email communication. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out, Barry. Much appreciated. Because, yeah, that's... um. All righty. Right. And we also have another phone number that has yeah. a question. Okay. It is a 502 phone number. Oh, 502. Which I think is Kentucky. If that I'm is, not... That is yeah. Kentucky. That's Louisville. Louisville. Yeah, that is it Louisville. It is okay. Kentucky. It's uh, Debbie Detheridge. And I have hey. a couple of quick things. Um, yes, ma'am. Been having a lot of, and it could be because of our crappy weather down here, but uh, been having a lot of problems with connectivity issues with agents. They'll say reconnecting and reconnecting. And tonight I was wanting to use it to read some directions off of a package, and I never could get it to connect. And so... That's one question. And what is the best way to um, get or to find out, like, what the Zoom link is to, like, to these calls? Uh, I thought I was on the IRA group on Facebook, but I'm not sure because I haven't seen anything. So, Oh, sure. Debbie, actually, I can answer your last question, and then I will turn it over to Ryan and Emily for your, your first question. But you want to, in the app, make sure that we have your email address under the More tab, uh, where you have all of your profile information. And as long as we have that email address in there, then you should be on our email list. Now, check your spam filter uh, because, you know, as newsletters do, sometimes they end up. Oh, there. yeah. But, yeah. Yep. But we are now I, putting out a weekly newsletter. So um, and we have things like the links to the Zoom calls in there and uh, a bunch of other information. I think I get that, but I don't know that I saw the link to it. So I have to pay attention ah. to that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they are definitely in the email. Now, this time I actually put them in the text. So it says click here for our Zoom call or click here for our YouTube channel. So if you all would prefer, I can leave those links out so that you can recognize them in that text a little bit easier if that would be an easier thing to do for everybody. As long as it's in the email and I need to know where to go to look for it, that's mm -hmm. fine. I'd much yep. prefer it in the email. Yep, it is definitely in the email. And uh, so if you are not receiving those emails, check and make sure that your correct email address is in your profile. And then we will, uh, we will get you set up. Yep. And, and Debbie, I, this I is actually... Emily. Thank you for asking about the connection issue you're experiencing. I'm going to recommend that if you will personally contact the customer care team, they can do a little bit of research into what exactly your issue was last night. But honestly, I do think it's the weather. <laughs> so yeah. I'm weather impacts a lot. a lot of things, including oh. mobile data towers. I mean, it's yes. one of those big things where if it's bad Yeah, weather, between the data towers and people have been having internet outages, but it's kind of like blipping in a lot of places. So mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what your area is like, but I do know that for some individuals on our team in Kentucky, the internet is having a hard time kind of holding and cell phone services in and out. So it, it probably yeah. depends on the infrastructure in your area, but please um, contact customer care and we can do some research into your specific I issue. Have, Double yeah. check and make sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. There have been a ton of brownouts around the country and uh, I was 
on the phone today with some other services completely not related to IRA. And oh my goodness, it was it was terrible. You know, the, the connection kept dropping and I felt so bad for the people that I was trying to get a hold of. So yeah, it's, um, it's tough out there, folks. It's winter. It's and interesting hello, weather, we... interesting weather, yeah. time, interesting, you know, things that are going on with weather. I mean, who thought, I mean, you, you look at the weather over in Texas even and wow. Oh my I goodness. Just, <laughs> power grid being gone, everything like that. It's just insane. And we have our next person here, Winway. Yeah, we are lucky here in Columbus. Columbus when we all we have is ice here so <laughs> not too bad right oh hello, hello. am i there am i go. unmuted yep, there you are. you are hi how are you doing Great. good how about you good thank you i had a question specifically for emily um so it's funny that you bring up lucy edwards i love her by the way um mm -hmm. she I'm really hoping that she does a video specifically regarding how she edits in conjunction with Ira because that would be super useful. But yes. my question is, when you learn how to video edit and all the YouTube tutorials are like 85% visual, so it's really mm -hmm. hard to translate what they're talking about onto the screen because um, timelines rely so much on color and other things that I don't know anything about. And you're working with somebody who doesn't have that expertise. Of course, I don't expect somebody to have that expertise, but how would you, Emily, suggest that we could, one, take some notes? Like if I were to take the time to um, watch some videos and just maybe shoot something that I don't care about. So if it gets messed up, I'm not gonna care. Um, take some notes that'll be easy to read. I've tried taking some notes, but some agents have found them difficult to read. And two, like, what kind of information would the agent expect me to know? Like, would they expect me to know about the color of a timeline or like how some sort of like video clip or audio clip are being um, interacted with independently or something like that? So um, that's a good question. I'm trying to think through an answer. Um, and also, P.S. Y'all, I'm so sorry. It turns out I'm not getting a new neighbor. They're doing maintenance in the elevator. So oh, you may dear. hear some like <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> really yeah. significant pounding on the walls. Um, but and also, oh, I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, I was just, I was, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to interrupt, but I just really quickly wanted to add that you guys always talk about helping people with their YouTube channels. And I think that's great, but I would be really interested in your response of like the um, editing software that people use, if you're able to disclose that and um, how precise people are about their editing. Cause um, the editing that I'm doing is for my small business and it has to be pretty precise and professional. Yeah, when we, I'm not sure if there's a specific software that I could recommend that I've seen other people using. That might be a really good question for our listserv or other professionals that you know in the field who are using something in particular. For the agent, the interaction becomes a little bit more, if you can tell me exactly what you need or what certain buttons look like, that might be useful. So I'm thinking about, for me personally, I've used, um, oh, what's the basic one that comes with the Mac? iMovie. Oh, but... iMovie, yeah. yeah. iMovie, for example, so hard to use, but free if you have a Mac, right? So a lot of people use it. And some of the buttons are not necessarily self-evident what they are because they're a picture mm -hmm. or a yeah. symbol rather than a word. Mm -hmm. So if you can tell me like, hey, I'm looking for the cropping tool, it like other agents have told me it looks like whatever or is whatever color or you know, fill in the blank, whatever it is that you're looking for. And then giving really specific instructions about where to crop it or what to do do I would say that in this kind of a question the agent would likely need you to be 100% the expert on the right. software or at yeah. least like explain really well what it is that you'd like one option that I've used in the past with explorers is not usually with video editing but with mm -hmm. other 
things like setting up a manual for, I'm sorry, like going through a manual for like building a piece of Ikea furniture, something mm-hmm. that's equally as complex as editing videos, just in yeah. a different way. Right? <laughs> so in that way, you may be able to find a YouTube video walking you through step-by-step how okay. to do a certain thing. And so if there's a certain video that would be helpful that is visual, so maybe not helpful for you, but would be vi- helpful for a person who is sighted to go through and look at it, like maybe have the agent watch that as they go through it. And then you can kind of edit in line with the directions in the video. So maybe it starts with the cropping and then it goes into what, I'm sorry, like starts with uploading content into the editor, then like dragging onto the timeline, then cropping, then, you know, like, and then the agent can kind of pause the video, do X, Y, Z task. Um, but they would likely need to rely on you to be the expert. And right. Of course. I, I totally expect that. I just, I just, I guess for me, I have been really struggling to articulate how, what, like what I want the agent to click on. And also I've been struggling to find a way of like going about that, of gaining this information. But this was super helpful because like we could just watch a video and I could just film something they don't care about and throw it in my timeline and um, play with it um, and ask questions about the positions of buttons, what they look like and Mm -hmm. if they ever move or whatever. Mm -hmm. where I could expect them to be and just be mindful of that when we watch the video to ask and write it down. So thank you, Emily. This was helpful. Yeah, no problem. And it's also a good lesson that's applicable in lots of different types of tasks, not necessarily video editing. If anybody who was listening kind of checked out, you're like, well, I don't edit video. So this one isn't for me. Um, One explorer who's really good at this, he's a student and he is excellent at knowing where on a page, because if anyone has been a student recently, then in the last couple of years, you've noticed that school websites have gotten like impossible to navigate, right? There's like, <laughs> things are, are not named what they should be named in order to get you to where it is that you need to go or the bar moves of where you can find the different navigation piece, etc. So this gentleman has basically memorized like either the title of what it is that he wants the agent to look for or the color or where on the page it might be. And then he can direct the agent. And then Mm -hmm. he likes that because now the agent is faster. Yeah, of course. But of course it's like extra brain power on his part of like having to keep all of that in his mind, but he's a student. He does this every day. So it's like not that hard for him. So that is also an, an option. Like if, because the agent is only as good at however you can direct them at whatever that thing is that you're wanting to accomplish, right? So if you right. can kind of say like, okay, Emily, it's my first time using a soft, uh, this piece of software and I, I'm going to need to be using this a lot because I just joined this math class and this, web, this software is totally inaccessible and I just have to use it, right? Like, mm-hmm. give me a walkthrough of like where these buttons are, what it kind of looks like, what I can kind of like as an agent, as a person who decided you look at this thing, like what's the first thing you see on the page? Okay, from here, now let's go like all of the different places. And so I've had a lot of explorers tell me that that's really helpful because then they feel like the agent is much faster because they can get yeah. faster. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. I, yeah. And you're totally right. I take that approach and the things that I do for work but I know what I'm doing. So I guess I don't think about it, but it's yep. really um, helpful to reverse engineer that. And while, you know, an agent is learning, you can learn too and be very um, deliberate about the questions that you ask. So. And I see here in the chat when we that um, Valerie has mentioned that there is someone who is organizing a class um, apparently about working with iMovie on the Mac. And Valerie, if you want to send us that information to support at ira.io, we'll be happy to disseminate that um, and make sure that people know that that's happening because that's I think that's great that someone is actually willing to do that. Um, I found that the very basics of iMovie were somewhat accessible on the Mac, on the uh, iOS. I haven't tried it on the Mac, but um, uh, so, for example, some buttons that actually looked weird to sighted people actually had voiceover labels. So I could tell what the buttons were and they couldn't, which was kind of amusing. But um, we will definitely try to get that information. So Valerie, if you can, like I said, send that to us, that would be awesome. 
Well, also I would helpful like, to know, Janine, kind yeah. of like where the pitfalls mm-hmm. of a particular piece of software that you're trying to use is. Like if you oh, know yeah. that there's something in the software that's really hard to use, like mm-hmm. you being able to tell your agent that <laughs> makes it easier when the agent gets there too. I'm still thinking about iMovie. Um, yes. Personally, it's like the worst software, but the hardest Ooh. part of iMovie is trying to finish the job. Like the, the button uh, that you think would be the save button mm-hmm. is not the save button. Uh-oh. And every single time that I'm trying to use it, I have to always look it up and mm-hmm. figure out like, okay, where, where did I go wrong this time? Why can I never remember what this button is? Yes. But now I know that. So I just book extra time into whatever it is that I'm trying to do with iMovie <laughs> so that I can go each oh, time wow. and reteach myself where that button is. Oh, wow. So if you know that there's something weird on a piece of software like that, then being able to direct your agent in that way also can be helpful. Oh, that's great. Fantastic. So we have some great suggestions tonight and some great issues that have come up. So I'd like to thank everyone for your contributions tonight. Uh, Ryan, do we have anything else for everybody tonight? I think we're... uh, I think we, that's it. I think that, that covers most of it. We just filled up our entire time, call. too. Look at that. Perfect. I was going to say, timing. whoa. And it's time for the Braille calendar. Whoops. And it's time for me to kill you all with micro microphone handling noise. There's the Braille calendar. It's kind of cheating, though, because March, as it's not a leap year, repeats exactly the same day as February. So our March Explorer call will be on St. Patrick's Day. I do not want to see anybody coming in here with green beer, okay? You heard that, Ryan? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Absolutely. We are from the beginning of this call. We'll be coming in with like shamrock uh, cakes with icing and everything. Little oh, you had to bring up cake them. again. You oh, had to end yeah. that out, didn't you? I'm mm. still stuck on the cake icing. That's just so <laughs> awesome. I'm like, whoa, people ice cakes. There better be some social media pics of that, folks. I want to see some social media iced cake sometime. I know. Yeah, that is I, just, I, that I is so that. amazingly cool. So. Wonderful. Well, who knew? Now, next month in the Explorer, in the uh, active zone, we're going to be talking about exercise equipment. And we may have to after <laughs> after all that cake icing. I know. Um, I'm excited for that one. Oh, yeah. You know, I, uh, I have to say I, I joined Apple, uh, the new Apple Fitness Ooh, Plus. Oh, you oh, did you? <laughs> Yep, and oh it's uh, it's really nice. So now I, I'm I'm looking at exercise equipment. So you know <laughs> that's I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, absolutely. And and Valerie brings up a good point here. We won't get pinched for not wearing green in the virtual world. Ha ha ha. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Although mm. I might my I just might wear my most lurid green at that uh, at uh, at our next call just because. <laughs> So thank you so much, Ryan and Emily and Troy and Melissa, and of course, all of you for really making this call what it is, a great source of information. Wonderful couple of hours this was. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for all of your input. Thank you for all of the the comments and the suggestions and questions. It was wonderful. Absolutely. And we will talk with you next month on the 17th when we will have some gigantic news.